Podcast. Hi everyone, it's Sonia here. I'm using my new screen capture software today for the first time, so let's hope that goes well. And um, a lot of you had asked me to let you know when there's going to be an event in Montreal. Uh, so there's going to be one actually this Saturday. I'm going to give you the info on that and also let you know why. Why is there going to be this event um, and what's happening up here? And actually, I have some encouraging news for you also. Before I start, I just want to say thank you for liking the video if you like it. And thank you for your support on Patreon, which helps keep my channel going. Also, please check out the link below for C60 EVO. You guys know I've had a lot of problems with my sleep. I've complained many times. And when you don't sleep well, you don't feel good. You don't have energy in the day. And so I discovered that C60 EVO has amazing properties that really help me with my sleep. Um, I just fall asleep easily, I sleep deeply, I wake up feeling rested, and then I have so much more energy during the day. So I just want to recommend to those of you who str struggle with low energy or difficulty sleeping, please check out the link below. This is the product that's really worked for me. Um, and if you're interested, if you use the coupon, you will get a discount. So thank you for checking it out. Okay, so here's what's been going on in Montreal. As of um, the return to school after March break, students going all the way down to grade one have to wear a mask all day in class. Uh, our government says, oh, don't worry about the kids. Children are resilient. They'll adapt. They'll be okay. Hmm. There's not really any data out there on what happens to kids when you put them under this kind of um, duress for a prolonged period of time. So we don't really know how resilient they are. Yes, kids are resilient, but actually children who've been separated from their caregiver or parent, you know, in, in early childhood or who've been traumatized can develop things like attachment disorder, which will last a lifetime. So there are certain kinds of experiences and trauma that will have permanent effects. So we don't really know uh, what the long-term effects will be, but a lot of parents um, already know that there are short-term effects, there are immediate effects. This video was posted online by a father addressing the government and telling the story. Here's a video right here. I'm gonna give you the link. It's in French though. Telling the story about his little boy, who he says, you know, very positive, easygoing kid, you know, just a, a great kid, right? And this kid is saying to his father, when am I going to, will there be a day when I'll be allowed to play in the courtyard with my friends like I see in the movies? This kid is six years old, you know, it's his first year in school, I guess. And, and he, he, he's only seen children playing freely in the movies. And then he says to his father, do you find that life is beautiful? And the father's like, yeah, well, you know, it's been hard lately, but life is beautiful. And this kid who's, who's had his last birthday in lockdown with, with no friends and is facing now this next one coming up very soon to be the same. He says to his father, well, I don't, I don't find that life is beautiful. I don't like it. You know, the kid's getting depressed. So the toll, the toll is being taken. And, um, you know, being forced to wear these masks is part of it. A, a lot of, I'm in a group with other parents in Quebec who are dealing with, you know, what's going on in the schools. And they're saying that their children are really suffering. They're really struggling. This is the Quebec government's website. So here are all the rules concerning wearing masks. And if you go down to people who are exempt, it says children under age 10, but in spite of this, the schools are somehow able to make their own rules. But there are people who are exempt, and that includes people with certain kinds of disabilities, including autism, actually even addiction and severe mental health problems as well. Uh, who either don't understand it or for whom wearing a mask or face covering causes significant disorganization or distress. This also includes people with severe skin conditions that are aggravated by the mask. So these people and these people are supposed to be exempt. But this is not at all applied in the school system for some reason. They will isolate those kids. That's what parents were saying. There are a few that said their school let the kids stay in the classroom. But a lot of them are saying that the kids have two options if they don't wear a mask. Be in a room all by yourself or do your schooling online. That That is not a reasonable accommodation. That is not 
uh, uh, you know, respecting the exemption for kids with special needs. Let's also keep in mind the question of, are the current uh, mandates and restrictions that our children being subjected to, are they in proportion to the state of the health emergency here in Montreal? Well, for one thing, um, in the entire last year, there have, there have been no deaths in people under 20 whatsoever, no deaths in children. So that can't be a reason why they're making the kids do all these things. It can't be because their lives are at risk. They have been some hospitalizations of children. However, it has been admitted in the media that some of those hospitalizations, actually a lot of them, are not children who are in the hospital because of COVID. They're kids who come in for some other reason and then test positive on arrival. Also, it has included a lot of kids, like autistic kids who live in group homes who were mildly ill but were sent to the hospital for isolation. So in the last two weeks, there have been a total of 39 people who died of COVID in Montreal. Most of them were 80 years and over, but it's still sad. But is that a reason to do what they're doing to the children in the schools? Is there any real evidence that forcing children in grade one to wear a mask uh, has any impact on the health effects uh, on, on people over 70? Most of the seniors at this point have been vaccinated, over 80 years old, most of them. Most of the seniors in the care homes, vaccinated. So I don't understand why they're placing this burden on the children. Now look at this hypocrisy. They make our kids wear masks. Now they're actually recommending they wear two masks. But here's our government, right here. Um, a meeting of politicians. We have Francois Legault right here. We have uh, Horacio Arruda right here. And uh, you notice anything about <laughs> these people? They're not wearing masks. So if these guys cannot even tolerate to wear masks in a meeting, why do they expect our children to do it in school all day, every day? It doesn't make any sense. A lot of us don't like the situation here. Oh, let me show you one other thing. This is just random and it's weird. Um, this is from uh, Archie Comics from 1997. And strangely, it says, uh, L'école de l'an 2021. So school in 2021. Strange thing is Betty is uh, at school at home in front of a computer screen. She's doing, um, she's doing a virtual virtual classroom. And there's the eye on the wall like Big Brother's watching you. And there's a camera right there on her. It says the monitor must be open at all times. Hmm. So creepy though, eh? Okay, so here is uh, what's happening. The 20th of March, that's this Saturday, 1 p.m. Place des Festivals, there is going to be a gathering I'm going to go there as a journalist and I'm going to record this and make a video so you guys can see what happened. So if you guys are wondering like, why am I not protesting? Why am I still wearing a mask? Well, I'm there as a journalist. So my, my most important mission is to document what happened and bring the footage home and show you the truth of what's going on in Montreal. Now, uh, I mean, you, you guys know I have a medical exemption. I don't really have to wear a mask. It's legit, it's legit outside especially would be legit at a protest even if they said you had to wear the mask at the protest I do have a medical condition that's specified so I don't even have to wear one but I don't want to waste my time drawing attention to myself uh, getting pulled away from doing my job ticketed uh, you know for this thing and then having to get it thrown out in court what's the point I think that I'll do much more good for the world by making a video that will reach many people in different places than I could possibly do by walking in the street with no mask on my, my face. I do that every single day. I walk in the street with no mask every day. So, you know, I just don't think it's, it's worth the battle for a protest, it seems totally pointless. Anyway, here's something that I'd like to show you that may encourage you. It's from uh, America's Frontline Doctors. Israel's Supreme Court orders COVID iron curtain lifted. So um, the, the government of Israel had sort of decreed that not, people couldn't just come in and out of Israel. They had a 30, 
a 3,000 passenger daily limit, which is going to be ending on the 20th of March. Okay, the, the court overruled the limits imposed by the government on the total number of passengers allowed to enter Israel by air each day. So they had said only 3,000 passengers could come in per day, but this is going to be abolished as of March 20th. And another thing was the court also ruled illegal requirements for travelers who lack both vaccination and recovery certificates to receive special permission to travel from a government committee, um, eliminating the need to receive exceptions committee approval. So the government had decided that unless you had a vaccination or, or a recovery certificate, remember the green pass, you would need special permission to travel from the exemptions committee, okay? And the court ruled that um, this was illegal. So those seeking to leave Israel after this coming Saturday will not be required to receive exemptions committee permission. I had been wondering, I mean, if these are Israelis, how can you not only deny them entry into their own country, but even deny them exit? If people, can't, people were not allowed to leave unless they had a special permission or they had been you know, vaccinated or had a certificate of recovery. So I was really wondering. Well, it turns out the court also didn't think that that was right and um, has overruled that. And it said the court also deplored the restrictions themselves writing in the ruling that the limits constitute an assault on the very heart of the legal right to enter Israel and leave it and others that are and other rights that are the heart of the fabric of life in democratic societies meanwhile attorney Ruth Magnus uh, Sukovolsky whose law office submitted a claim to the International Criminal Court in The Hague that the Israel government is guilty of violating the Nuremberg Code and committing crimes against humanity in its vaccination campaign, said lawyers from around the world are turning to their offices asking to join the complaint in The Hague. Those same lawyers from around the world recognize the fact that Israel is a country where an experiment was conducted and fear that the countries, that their countries will also be forced to be exposed to the experiment. You see, um, Israel had created an agreement with Pfizer. They made a deal with Pfizer where they exchanged doses of the vaccine from Pfizer for data from the recipients of the vaccine. So, of course, they wanted to vaccinate as many people as possible. I mean, they, they said they were going to encourage them. That's not mandatory. But you know, if you, if you don't take it, there's nothing you can really do. So that's kind of actually like a coercion. Like if you don't take the vaccine, you can only go to the grocery store or the pharmacy. You will be left behind. That's what they had said, which basically means you have to take it. You can't go anywhere. You may not even be able to go to work. So you can't really make a, a choice freely when those are your alternatives. So the Israeli government had made this deal with Pfizer so that Pfizer... Um, could get data, which is none other than a clinical trial, like a big open one involving a huge, a huge population of a whole country. But that is actually what it is. Pfizer's taking all this data and using it, you know, for their safety and efficacy information on their product. The law office Monday sent a letter to Pfizer demanding an investigation regarding the Pfizer-Netanyahu agreement emphasizing section 4.2.6 that discusses cancelling the agreement as soon as a public investigation is opened. Wow, that's weird. Copies were sent to the FDA, the U.S. Attorney General, members of Congress, and the International Criminal Court in The Hague. Interesting. Here's one more thing. High court halts transfer of info on unvaccinated to local authorities. That was another thing Israel was doing. They were um, collecting all this data on who had had the shot and who hadn't, and they were going to hand it over to local authorities. But, of course, uh, this, you know, breaches people's privacy. Judges ordered state bodies to explain why law allowing health ministry to hand over details on those who are not inoculated is in effect. 
So the top court issued a temporary injunction barring the health ministry from doing this. So they're going to have to you know, explain uh, why the legislation allowing them to do this is, has not been scrapped. Uh, you know, if they don't come up with a really good reason, it's probably going to be deemed illegal. See, the judge cited laws harming of the constitutional right to privacy guaranteed in Israel's quasi-constitutional basic laws. So there is actually some follow-up on a legal end concerning what Israel has been doing because of the entire world, their approach was the most draconian. And a lot of us were looking at, at this and saying, well, can, can they get away with this? Is this going to be the, the new way of doing things? Uh, but it's being challenged. And you know the protests like or the events or gatherings like the one that's going to happen Saturday, that in and of itself doesn't actually do anything. Uh, it just shows the government, hey, we're here and we're not happy. You have a right to protest. The government also has a right to ignore you. Petitions can sometimes help because they could get it on the agenda so it's discussed, you know, in the in the parliament or in the, the National Assembly or wherever. Your, your representative may bring it forward. Um, writing to your representative, your, your me member of parliament or your member of the National Assembly, that may actually do more good, especially if you create actually a petition and, and then attach a letter and then send that. Uh, that's probably the best way because then it has to be brought up. This organization here, Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms, they are waging the battle on the legal front. A legal organization, federally registered charity that defends citizens' fundamental freedoms under the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms through pro bono legal representation and through educating Canadians about the free society. So this is a organization that, you know, is con contesting things that they consider to go against the charter, um, such as a lot of these COVID tickets, which with the help of these lawyers were then thrown out because actually they don't hold up under scrutiny. Um, the hotel quarantines and travel restrictions. See, on, on that end, on the legal end, um, th this can really make a difference. You know, if you feel like your government is just walking all over you, one of the best ways to fight that is to challenge when they walk all over you, to take it to court. So check out this website. And, you know, the whole time it's been a case of uh, rules for thee, but not for me. A lot of people are very upset with that. Uh, don't forget this weekend, March 20th, if you want to show support, um, they'll be meeting at Place des Festivals, which is like down by Place des Arts. And uh, I will be there. And if you can't make it, I'll, I'll take video and I'll show you what happens. So that's it, you guys. Uh, I hope you found that information uh, interesting and useful and encouraging that, you know, just because it's the government doesn't mean they can just do whatever they want and throw our charter rights out the window. It's important that we have those rights. They're what protect us, protect our democracy. Otherwise, we can end up in what you call a dictatorship. So um, I'm keeping an eye on this. So thank you for liking the video. Thanks again for your support on Patreon. Please check out the link below for C60 EVO, which has been so helpful for me. And uh, so you can get a discount also. And thanks for joining me in the chat. Thanks for listening to me. And I'll see you next time.